Hey, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. What I want to talk about today is part two of how to adjust to braided line. Uh, I'm going to start off talking about hooks. If we're going to keep that part pretty brief, then I'm going to jump into the, the lines themselves, the knots we tie, and how you really can adapt from being a fluoro fisherman or a mono fisherman and adjust the fishing braid or braid with a leader. Uh, starting with the hooks, the first thing you want to do is adjust your hooks. When you're fishing mono or fluoro, you can get away with lighter wire hooks. It's pretty simple. You use a lot of drag. There's stretch in the line. But when you go to braid, the first thing you're going to notice is that if you don't adapt your equipment, you'll bend out hooks. So the, the way to adjust is very simple. Each company, your major companies, Gamakatsu, Owner, some of the others, they've all made hooks for braided line or super line. Uh, this is the Gamakatsu. Here you've got like a standard 4 aught EWG hook. Here you've got the super line version of the exact same hook. Just a much heavier wire. The bends are the same, just a heavier wire hook. Holds up really well to braided line. The other style of hook that I really like, Owner makes two. I use the Owner 3X hooks and the Owner Zowire hooks. That's a newer hook. But uh, instead of using a traditional hook, you can still use the same style, the same feel, the same look. You just go to a little bit heavier wire. That really is all you need to do. You don't need a bigger hook, just a little bit stronger hook. Same thing with my trebles. Instead of using the stock 1X hooks that come on my baits, I'll step up to a 2X or a 3X hook. And you don't need to worry about hook penetration. They're still really sharp. Plus you're using a stronger line that sets those hooks really easily. Now what I want to do is jump into the actual line itself. We're going to show you some different knots. Uh, the two knots that I use to tie braid direct to the baits. And then I'll show you uh, two versions of my connection knot. And then how we tie those leader knots onto the baits as well when we're using a leader. So let's jump right into that. What I'm going to tie now is my connection knot. There are a lot of different knots out there. A lot of guys use a lot of different knots. I use one of the less popular knots. I use a blood knot. But having used this knot for quite a few years, it's incredibly strong. I've literally never had a knot failure. I love this knot. I really don't understand why more guys don't tie it. So to show you, I'm gonna tie it twice. First, I'm gonna tie it the way I tie it in heavy line. This is 30 pound mono. I've just dyed it blue so that you can see it. This is 80 pound braided line. Uh, this particular line is P-line, uh, but it's just a really, really rough, heavy braided line. The way I tie this knot is you cross your two main lines. You can see that there. And then I pin that middle point with my fingers and I'm gonna hold that. What we're gonna do is the lines are going to wrap away from each other. So this one is gonna come nine loops down the braid excuse me, down the mono. So there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then it's going to cross back at my middle point. Then I'm going to pin all of that. Now my mono is going to go nine loops down my braid the opposite direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then you can see back at that middle point, it's gonna cross back through that same hole. If it's tied correctly, you'll see nine loops on each side, crisscrossing from opposite directions back through the middle. Now you normally get that line wet and you get a good hold of your two lines and just draw it tight. When it's tied right, your two tags are going to face out opposite ends of the knot. That's a proper knot. Then I'm just going to trim off my two tag lines and I cut them short. I'll show you how short I fish them because this knot really has no slip at all. So I cut them really good and short. And that is my finished knot right there nine loops each direction. 
That's how you tie these really, really heavy lines together. Now I'm going to show you how I tie the same knot in really light line. This is a 15 pound Power Pro braid. I've stained it red again just so you can see it. This is a six pound fluorocarbon. Now I still tie a blood knot, I just tie it with a different number of loops. Uh, a lot of people complain when you get into these really light lines that the knots slip and fail. Uh, the reason why I use this knot is if you've got a good knot tied, it will hold. And if it's not a good knot, you know right away. As soon as you go to tension it, it will fail. If it tightens up and binds, that knot is solid. So it's going to be really hard for you to see these light lines, but I'm going to go ahead and tie it fairly quickly, and then I can show you the finished product. So crisscross in the middle. On my braid, this time I'm going to go 11 turns. Three, four, five six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Back across my middle point. Pin that line. On my fluoro, I'm only going to go seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cross back at that middle point. So you can see it there. They're going opposite directions, crossing back at the midpoint. Now this time I'm going to wet the knot, and then when I draw this up tight, you'll know right away it either holds or not. There it goes. Nice tight connection. That is a solid, solid knot. We're tying 15 pound braid to 6 pound fluoro, incredibly light lines. That knot will hold. I can pull and pull and pull on that knot. It's not going to fail. Cut those tag ends really short and you're solid. So the big difference when I'm in my heavy lines, I go nine loops each direction. When I tie in these light lines, 11 loops on the braid, seven loops on the fluoro or mono, and that knot's gonna hold for you. All right, now I'm gonna show you just a standard Palomar, traditional knot, probably the number one bass fishing knot. This is what I use anytime I wanna tie that fluoro or mono leader to the hook. The way you tie that is you just go through your eyelet and then you just go back through. So I'm left with the loop on one side, the two tag ends on the other, tie a quick overhand knot You're gonna pull that tight, and then the whole hook goes through the loop. And then you just draw it tight. Be mindful that your tag and your main line are coming out the same side of that loop. You don't want them coming out of opposite sides. If you do that, if this was coming out this other side, you'd be tying a slip knot. So make sure they both come out the same side of that loop and then just snug it up. And that's a Palomar, the traditional knot that I tie for most of my fluoro and mono fishing uh, when I've got that leader on. I'm going to show you the one other knot that I use. That's the San Diego Jam. And that's another very simple knot. It's a very strong knot. Uh, it was designed to be used with very heavy monos or fluoros traditionally, but I found that it ties extremely well all the way down to about eight pound test. The way you tie that is you go through the eye, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back up our line so they're parallel, and then we're going to double back down and start looping. Now it's going to be hard for you to see the way that I tie it, but I throw a loop around my pinky, and that's what I use to hold it to maintain the loop at the top. And you'll see that at the end. So my line goes through, I throw it around my pinky, and then I'm gonna come down seven turns down both lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We go through this loop that we have at the bottom, then through that loop, I'm still holding with my pinky. Now the trick to a good San Diego jam 
is to twist it as you cinch it up. You get those loops so where they're laying out nice and flush, one on top of the next. Good tight knot, and you slide it down, snug it up. And that is a San Diego jam. I use that in some of my light lines, but all of my heavy lines. Anytime I'm using 20, 25, 30 pound, that's the knot I use. One thing that I really like about this knot and it's why I sometimes use it in light lines too, is here's my tag end. A little one inch tag end, as opposed to a Palomar where I'm gonna end up with four, five, six, eight inches a line if I'm tying a big bait. Here, all I've wasted is just one inch of extra line, which is really nice when you're dealing with leaders so you don't have to keep tying on new leaders. Now, when I tie direct with braid, I change my knots just a little bit. Uh, I still tie either a Palomar or a San Diego Jam, but I tie a modified version. So what I do, we'll start with the Palomar. I put my line through the eyelet, just like you're, you're starting a, a typical Palomar. But then instead of going back through, I go around the back and through again, leaving a loop around the eyelet. Then I finish out with the rest of just a traditional Palomar, back through the eye, so I have two lines on one side, tag end on the other, but with an extra loop around the eyelet. And then I can finish out that knot. Tie my overhand knot, put the bait through, and draw it all tight. What that does, that extra loop around the eyelet is just a little more bite because that braid has a tendency to slip a little, but with that extra loop around the eye, you just have more bite and now it won't slip. I've never had this knot fail. Now I'll show you the San Diego Jam or the modified San Diego Jam as well. With that one, it's basically the same thing, just an extra loop around the eyelet. So we go through We'll go around again, same thing, get that loop on the eyelet. Now with that San Diego Jam, the way I tie it is I hold the hook with one finger just to keep everything stable. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring that line up and then you're going to double it and start wrapping down. To make it easy for myself, I loop it around my pinky. But to show you, I'll just put the loop up and bring it around and then you just start wrapping down. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. You go through that loop down here at the bottom and then back through that loop up at the top. So really it's no different than the standard San Diego Jam. Draw it tight. Nice tight knot and then slide it down. The only difference is that extra loop around the eyelet. There's your finished knot and that knot is strong. Holds extremely well in braided line. I hope these tips help you guys out. Don't be afraid of braided line. Once you get used to tying these connection knots, you can have 100% confidence in that knot passing in and out of the line guides, even in and out of the reel without a problem. I know that's the number one fear that guys have, but those knots that I just showed you, those are what we're fishing day in and day out. We're fishing out here in just heavy, heavy cover, really strong fish, big fish, and we are not having failures. You can tie these knots, they're not complicated. Take them out, hook big fish, and they are going to hold. You can go fish with confidence. Good luck out there. The second bait is gonna be the spook or some kind of walking bait. Uh, but the spook, you know, spooks have been around forever it seems like. Almost everybody throws them, but in the fall is definitely when they shine. The bait fish start getting, getting pushed up, especially when they get into the shine.